With Season 6 of The Dragon Prince coming out somewhat recently, it only makes sense that Raylum is the topic to take me out of my almost exactly year-long hiatus. This season dedicated nearly an entire episode towards Raylum and Callum. Unlike my last analysis video on Raylum, I'll be taking a slightly different approach this time. Given how much there is to cover, I'll walk you through the season episode by episode, focusing on the most prominent themes, trust and vulnerability. Whilst we're at it too, the 7th and potentially final season, Dark, is releasing later this year on December 19th, so be sure to mark your calendars. Hi, I'm Adrian from Ember Nexus. Join me as we dive into Raylan and Callum's rekindled relationship in Season 6, filled with love and truth among the stars. I really hope you enjoy. Inherently, putting trust in another person requires you to be vulnerable to an extent, which is why I think these themes are so deeply intertwined this season. As I've said before, trust is more potent through actions than words and is most intimate when sharing deepened fears or insecurities. This is evident in the first third of the season when things are still a little bit shaky between them. Episode 1 lays the foundation for the rest of the season between Rayla and Callum, starting the Corona of the Heavens storyline and highlighting the darkness consuming Callum, making him more susceptible to Aravos and his puppetry. A reoccurring theme we've seen is Rayla's tendency to prioritise the world before dealing with her own troubles. This has been apparent in previous seasons, with her putting rescuing the Dragon Prince egg above saving her own hand in Season 1, and her burning desire to save her parents and Runan from the coins. While selfless and noble, it runs the risk of becoming somewhat detrimental if she doesn't take care of herself properly. Without doing so, Rayla won't be able to do what's required to continue benefiting the world. Callum finds this difficult to deal with because although I believe he fully shares the desire to do the right thing per the world, he recognises the importance in self-care and still attends to his own needs regularly. This mindfulness and presence are what has enabled him to understand several arcanums, let alone one. It's hard for him to accept this and stand idly by without Rayla allowing him the opportunity to do something for her. Rayla's selflessness also features prominently in episodes 3 and 5, tying into the Corona of the Heavens storyline where the Quasar Diamonds are required for the spell to free her family from the coins. Following Aravos entering Callum's mind in his sleep, Callum immediately goes to wake Rayla and confide in her. She initially brushes him off, reinforcing the shakiest start I mentioned earlier. However, this sets the stage for growth and strengthening later on in the season. Rayla acknowledges the amount of pressure he is under and suggests it might be from stress and it not being something to worry about, but as the danger becomes clearer, her dismissal of the severity dissolves. Rayla later offers to take the prison down into the dungeon, providing Callum with an out if he isn't comfortable handling it alone. This moment underscores their care for one another, as does Ezrin's instruction nearing the end of the episode for them to both look after each other before they set off. On their ride, Callum without second thought comfortably holds onto Rayla's waist to steady himself. This parallels a moment in episode 5 of season 3 when Callum was hesitant to do so, implying that it would be weird, although perhaps more the case after their first, slightly unprompted first kiss. This change signals growth in their comfort and intimacy. Callum even rests his head on Rayla's back as he yawns, having woken up early. She smiles, perhaps pleased that he feels safe enough to be so relaxed around her, or glad that he's getting the rest that he needs. It's a sweet detail that signifies their closeness and how comfortable they feel around each other and care. I'll explore this idea of being comfortably vulnerable more in episode 3. It's also worth noting their departure being at sunrise, that while logical for them to leave for a long journey in the morning to make the most of daylight, sunrises also convey connotations of rebirth and a new beginning symbolising a fresh new start to this relationship, removed from the burdens of the past. Their ride across the bridge together is also significant, because it hints towards greater communication between the two on this emotional journey they are now undertaking, unified by this strong connection between them. Episode 2 only contains a brief scene towards the end, reminiscent of the stargazing scene from Season 5, where Rayla and Callum are again out camping in the wilderness as a part of their journey to another destination. However, there are some notable differences this time. Rather than Rayla being awake and ready to engage, she's sleeping, facing towards Callum. This is significant because her body language suggests a willingness to engage, even if she isn't actively doing so. 
If she were turned away, it could indicate a disinterest or a distance between them. This subtle detail in how they're facing gives us some great insight into how Rayla especially perceives their relationship progressing. Callum is content focusing on his drawings, whilst Rayla doesn't feel the need to make conversation. Being comfortable enough to rest, trusting Callum is there watching over her. Callum's iconic, shocked fish face is also replaced by a look of endearment towards Rayla. It indicates how they've once again grown more at ease around each other. Sneasel sleeping on Rayla's lap also adds another layer of meaning. Throughout this season, Stella and Sneasel's act as proxies for Rayla and Callum respectively. Sneasel's being on her lap might convey Callum's wish to do the same and be more intimate with Rayla, a longing that he hasn't let surface yet. Another significant detail is when Callum then drops the key of Aravos rather than setting it down. To me, this represents his shift in priorities from his mission to save Zadia to his growing desire to care for and be with Rayla. It reflects a release of control, something he struggled with in Season 4 whilst they're on their way to Rex Igneous. Now, he's learning that it's okay to let go temporarily, knowing that he can always return to it later. First things first, the episode being named The Frozen Ship can be immediately recognised as a double entendre, although perhaps less with the risque part, because that might be solely reserved for this incredible scene. Oh, sorry, I, did, I didn't mean to- It's okay, it was a bumpy ride. Anyway, the name cleverly plays on the stillness in Raylam's relationship over the past couple of seasons, whilst also describing the main interest of this episode, that being the frozen ship. The episode opens with Callum reliving a decision he made in the previous season where he resorted to using dark magic again. In this dream, we hear him attempting to justify his actions which he potentially didn't even make. I did one spell. One. I had to. We see him being controlled by Aravos, so he was potentially stripped of his free will in the moments where he actually performed the spell. This scene also provides some insight into Callum's greatest fear, losing Rayla. Based on Rayla's shocked expression, it appears as though he's more frightened of Aravos taking him away from her than Aravos himself. When Callum stirs from his sleep and their mountain arrives at the frozen sea, Rayla teasingly calls him by a pet name as she turns. Sneasels and snoozles. Using a baby name like this is a way to poke fun at him whilst keeping it endearing and serves as a small bonding moment. Furthering this, Rayla calls Callum Mage when their shadow paw starts to sink under the ice. Whilst having the practical effect of reminding him that he can use magic to save the mount, it does hint at a more affectionate nickname. As they send the shadow paw home, Callum steps forward to stand side by side with Rayla. With each pet on the same shoulder, it visually reinforces that they're on the same side, both heading in the same direction. Travelling across the frozen sea, Rayla underestimates a patch of black ice and slips, only to land in Callum's arms after he moves to catch her from falling. Callum smiles, perhaps amused by her confidence. Rayla, meanwhile, returns a more romantic smile, her body language showing a mix of anticipation and slight embarrassment. She turns her arms to her sides and raises her shoulders. Being so focused on Callum, she doesn't even notice Stella climbing out of her arms. A sneeze from Sneasels breaks the moment, prompting Rayla to vocalise her thoughts. Fittingly, for this episode, it carries a double meaning. Thanks. That was super smooth. The ice, I mean. Determined, Rayla promptly tries walking across the ice for a second time by herself, but Callum once again rushes forward to assist her, linking their arms together. This moment brings them closer physically, building on more of the physical contact they just had previously. As they continue, Rayla turns to look at Callum, suggesting it being a comfortable moment for them where their connection was strengthened. Later, we see them walking across a vast, empty expanse of the frozen sea, with only distant mountains in sight, leaving them with only their thoughts and each other. Rayla's headstrong nature is shown as she is out in front once again, leading the way across. The visible strength of the wind and snow convey both a sense of freedom whilst highlighting the emptiness of their surroundings. Alternatively, it could suggest uncertainty and change driven by an unstoppable force, Aravos. As we later discover, the ship Rayla and Callum stumble across is called the Ray of Illumination, a metaphor that symbolises their relationship for the rest of the episode. Arriving at the ship, Rayla proposes that it's been there for centuries, aligning with how natural the relationship between them feels, like it's endured for hundreds of years. However, the ship's prominent appearance in the ice reflects the rarity of an elf and human being together. It stands out as being something unusual. Callum remarks how it's literally frozen in time, playing on how nothing has romantically happened between them because it's as though their relationship has been on pause. Rayla corrects him saying, It's literally frozen in ice. It's figuratively frozen in time. 
This amendment is really significant as it provides a different outlook on their relationship. Rayla pointing out that it's figuratively frozen adds a deeper level of meaning past the genuine language correction. Symbolically, while it may have seemed as though their relationship was frozen, in reality it was preserved, kept safe within the ice. Rayla then mentions how unstable this ship might be after so many years in the elements, targeting the ups and downs in a relationship tested by time. It being unstable could also symbolize how a relationship may also be unstable as there may be things not yet revealed, affecting the entire foundation. A large piece of ice falls, hinting at something potentially breaking or falling apart. Rayla's outspoken confidence in handling any shifts suggests her adaptability in the relationship. Once inside the ship, Rayla finds a locked door leading to the captain's quarters, notably kicking the door down similar to how Amaya did at the Bantha Lodge, highlighting their comparison from last season. The door closing on Rayla and Stella, only for Rayla to push it back open, symbolizes her willingness to expose her thoughts and be vulnerable in the elements rather than keeping them locked tightly away. Meanwhile, Callum unknowingly makes some very self-aware comments about the ship's state. I honestly don't have anything further to really analyze here because I'm withering away from all the hurt right now. Although it does add to the emotional weight of the scene. I mean, look at nice this ship. This ship, this ship, ship, ship is going nowhere. People, people, people were probably some people's favorite ship. ship would go to the amazing places. The ship has an amazing ship. Back inside, Rayla searches the captain's quarters, discovering a diary filled with the captain's final thoughts. A diary is a deeply personal item associated with intimate feelings and deep hidden secrets. The diary offers a way for Rayla to learn from the mistakes of someone else, guiding her own decisions moving forward. The shift in the narrative voice from male to female tailors the story to Rayla, making it more relatable and personal. Esmeralda Scowl, the captain, was immortalized in a biographical poem. The writer captures her ambition to leave a lasting mark on the world, similar to that of being the one to return the Dragon Prince home to Zadia, before then coming to the somber conclusion of it being believed she spent her final days reflecting on her choices, revealing a tragic irony. Despite her grand pursuit of a grand legacy, ultimately, her yearning was to express her love for Conrad, a gesture she could have made all along, resulting in her feeling hollow and regretful as we hear Rayla read and reflect on the following line. Conrad, if you were here, I would tell you all my choices were nothing, and you are everything. Esmeralda's name, symbolizing loyalty, love, and eternal relationship, foreshadowed her destiny. The diary and poem intensify her pain for how deeply she desired to be loved and to love in her final moments. Callum remains outside drawing a picture of the girl whom he cares for and misses the most, the girl who calms his mind the girl who serves as his ray of illumination during stormy times. Shivering in the cold without her warmth, he approaches the stuck ship and hears Rayla crying. Concerned, he rushes to her attention, arriving just as she reads what would presumably lead into Esmeralda's final words for Conrad. Cutting this off, it prompts Rayla to confront her own pent-up feelings she's been keeping from him before it's too late. Having been vulnerable with herself only moments ago and the diary bringing a lot of emotions to the surface, Rayla overreacts and becomes defensive after Callum unknowingly hurt her, being more susceptible to smaller things that otherwise wouldn't matter. As their disagreement intensifies, small creaks in the wood can be heard, indicating the ship is under strain, and after a punch, Rayla implies that it likely couldn't take another hit, the ship being in a more fragile state. Nah, it's been frozen here for centuries, it's not gonna suddenly sink tonight. Callum does partially foreshadow the coming events as the ship does sink by the end of the episode. Look, she may be stuck, but she's still a good ship. But simultaneously offers reassurance to the audience that this ship will figuratively continue to sail even if it is strained. As they prepare to sleep on the ship, Rayla offers to share her blanket with Callum after his belongings sunk below the ice earlier. This is a callback to season 3 when Nyx teases them about. I wasn't sure, uh... If you guys needed two blankets or just one? It demonstrates a new maturity in their relationship when neither of them feel awkward about it. After they both get comfortable, or for Callum as comfortable as she can get lying on a plank of wood, they look up towards the stars through a broken part in the deck. The clear night sky symbolizes hope, protection, and divine guidance, suggesting the stars will eternally be watching over them. Callum shares an emotional poem with Rayla written by his father, Damien, about the stars. The poem's first two lines link back to the idea of stars as eternal sentinels, guardians watching over them. He states that he is sore after the star's silver hearts, suggesting that perhaps past their celestial existence, he believes them to have a soul. 
questioning whether Stars can die also seems to be Damien's way of grappling with his own fragility in life. On the next line, the verb gasp also emphasises this, given his condition. The phrase living night adds complexity to the preceding line, suggesting that the night, which is typically seen as the end, also has life. Rayla, moved by the poem, comments on how beautiful the words were and says, Thank you, Callum. Thank you for sharing with me. She recognises his vulnerability to share such a personal part of his life with her, this also deepening their bond of trust. Trying to sleep, Callum begins to shiver and Rayla decides to make the decision for him about sharing her blanket. This act is not only fueled out of not wanting him to freeze to death, but one of kindness and respect. It furthers their relationship with warm and supportive actions. Trying once again to sleep, the pets tease amongst themselves for a little bit about the two of them being so close together before each of them turn outwards. Advancing the idea of them being watched over, the Northern Lights also make an appearance, symbolising the spirits of their ancestors, potentially including Damien, Sarai, and King Harrow. The colour being green also stamps this as a time of vitality to keep moving forward, and a time of peace. The pets, not being satisfied, scheme and turn Rayla and Callum towards each other, making Callum give her a small embrace. Both of them remark on how close their faces are, implying the possibility of a kiss. Rayla furthers this by noticing that she can feel Callum's warm breath, and she says that she likes it after he apologises. Callum's eyes begin to shimmer, but he calms when Rayla gently takes his hand and moves it to her cheek. Rayla closes her eyes first, showing her trust in Callum, which he reciprocates. But as he starts to draw her face closer, he stops, opening his eyes, a symbol of honesty and truth. Unable to bear the disappointment he knows will be in her eyes, Calm turns away and he admits to using dark magic again. Here, I think it's really important to note that Rayla is less concerned about the morality of his actions, and more about the danger he's putting himself in. I can't believe you used dark magic again! Because it's wrong? Because it's dangerous! Because it hurts you! Callum, defensive and overwhelmed, over-exaggerates the situation because he knows he did something wrong, trying to avoid responsibility and the argument, as it's easier to not hold himself accountable and let himself feel like all is lost. Rayla challenges him, urging him to make the right choice between her and the greater good, implying knowing her being the greater sacrifice to him. Under the strain of the argument, the ship begins to crumble, even the more solid rocks continue to crack as a fire erupts throughout the ship. Literally, or should I say figuratively, a burning passion engulfing the ship in flames. Rayla is still able to retrieve the pearl from the sinking ship, being able to navigate it. As she returns outside clutching the pearl and coughing, the ship is cleverly revealed as a metaphor for their relationship. The ray of illumination vessel now seen as Raylum. In the background, we hear a grand and more somber drawn out version of their theme being played by strings as the ship continues to sink into the icy depths below. Callum breaks the silence by evening out Rayla's point on sacrifice by making his own request, echoing his plea from season 4 on their way to Rex Ignis on what to do if Aravos ever controls him again. The camera pans to the sky, now clouded in smoke, as the ship lets out a final whine, destined to never see the light of day ever again. Callum and Rayla have been trekking through mountainous terrain in harsh conditions, before finding themselves able to spot the star scraper piercing through the clouds. It acts as a beacon guiding them forward, or perhaps could be more akin to the light at the end of the tunnel. Reaching the base of the star scraper, Callum reads three draconic runes, which only raise one side of the platform. Rayla quickly jumps on and instructs him to read the runes on the other side to level it. Personally, I could see this being interpreted in two different ways. The first being that Rayla is more level-headed, as she was the one who helped balance out the platform, and even as more mature when Calum and Rayla each say, <laughs> Hey, how about that? That was actually kind of fun! No, that was not fun! That was almost dying! Alternatively, or in conjunction with that, it could also symbolise how they complement each other perfectly, each needing the other person to find balance. Awaiting their arrival at the top, the Celestial Elves greet them. The Elves act as stand-ins for the audience, eagerly awaiting their return. The Prophecy of Raylum. However, they are not able to see what's happening behind the closed doors of the studio, and each detail being put into Rayla and Callum. This is highlighted when the Elder tells them to DROP. 
Even when other people want them to fail or Raylan falls into a new low, despite setbacks, they persevere. At the bottom once more, Calum exacerbates being more hot-headed, although fair, whilst Rayla remains calm and composed. Separately, later, with Cosmo and Astrid, Rayla gives Calum a playful wink when she corrects him on her being the warrior instead of him being both the warrior and the mage. This moment underscores the significance of their relationship, being the chosen two, facing challenges together and growing through their shared experiences. The phrase, the chosen two will reclaim the heavens, additionally suggests that they will regain their freedom from this adventure, finally able to enjoy each other's company and their relationship without external pressures. Given an impossible task, Callum tries to instill hope in Rayla by saying, Maybe there's something to it. Maybe we can do this. He is biased, of course, because he knows what the reward is and wants it for Rayla. He believes she deserves it for her selflessness in saving the world and putting aside her own needs for others. Rayla does push back slightly, knowing that's unlike him to buy into some prophecy, since he does believe destiny is a book you write yourself. Later that night, Callum grows angry with himself when a rune refuses to work. He knows it will be crucial in convincing Rayla that their task isn't as impossible as they've been made to believe. To soothe Stella to sleep, Rayla sings her lullaby, which also doubles to calm Callum, easing him knowing that she's there. In this scene, Rayla only sings the first stanza, but the full lullaby, which she later sings to Esmeri, has a deeper significance. The lullaby speaks of being a comforting light in the dark to guide someone, reassuring them that they are loved and not alone, even when you cannot see them. It conveys a sense of constant love and security, using gentle terms like my dear and darling. It also insinuates that Calum should feel connected to Rayla through his heart and the moon. The repetition creates a soothing rhythm to lull the listener into a sense of calm and reinforces the message I am near, my love is here. It also juxtaposes the dark sky with a shining light, a metaphor for hope and guidance in times of despair. The moon symbolises protection, love, and an eternal presence as enduring as the moon itself. All qualities Rayla possesses through her connection to the moon arcanum. The original writer refers to themselves as the Silver Queen, a figure representing grace, strength, purity, and clarity. After their nap following the lullaby, the pets are seen cuddling together, acting as proxies for Callum and Rayla. Even though they aren't physically close, Rayla's lullaby connects her and Callum emotionally, and the pet's embrace symbolises their mental closeness. At Esmeri, Callum drops to shelter Rayla as they first encounter the beast. It also showcases their teamwork as Callum distracts the beast whilst Rayla climbs, before then saving her after she falls. When Rayla figures out what's really going on, they have a brief discussion about what she's discovered and Callum ultimately trusts her judgement. Rayla sings the extended version of the lullaby to Esmeri. The message, Even when your loved ones are gone, they never truly leave you, rings closer to home, relating to those who have passed. In fact, as the arch dragon of the moon, it aligns with the idea of the Silver Queen cited in the lullaby, perhaps hinting at this actually being Luna Tenebris' lullaby to Esmeri, which somehow made its way into the Silver Grove over centuries. Whilst being awarded the Corona of the Heavens, the adventure theme plays in a grand style. It's a really sweet parallel to episode 3 of this season when Calm now takes Rayla's hand and moves it towards the peace before letting go so she can save at the moment. She turns to him saying, You knew. You knew this was the reward. And as she does, a slowed version of the Raylam theme plays. It begins with a piano but becomes more complex as it develops, integrating strings. She takes a step back to put it down before running to Callum, giving him a tight hug and letting out a small squeal of joy as the music climaxes before softly fading out. It's a beautiful scene where the Rayla motif once again accompanies their deepened feelings for each other, revealing their true emotions. As they ascend to the zenith, Cosmo becomes time blind among the stars, which, as we've covered, are associated with destiny and fate. Rayla's reading, if we want to call it that, references her empathy for the guard she spared in the very first episode, a small act that has sent ripples across an ocean, leading to this very moment, standing side by side with Callum. Similar to episode 3, the title of episode 6, A Moment of Truth, holds a more significant meaning than it lets on. The title also has a double meaning which we'll cover shortly. As we've known and as Callum soon realises, Rayla is his truth, meaning that truly, at his core, she is what he wants. 
We start by focusing on the sunrise, symbolizing new beginnings, much like the end of episode 1, and this is very much the case following the conclusion of the previous episode. With the Raylum theme taking on a much more positive tone compared to the somber notes when the ship was sinking in episode 3. Upon seeing Callum sitting on the floor, Rayla's first instinct is to check up on him and cheer him up, mirroring her actions from season 5. She also kneels down to his level, showing that she sees herself as his equal in facing his anxieties. The title fulfills its double meaning the moment they learn the truth about the Pearl. Rayla refuses to let Callum blame himself for the one they brought, despite the consequences. In the timeline that eventually doesn't end up happening, when they first propose the idea of Callum searching for his one deep truth and he initially rejects it, Rayla says, Callum? Maybe we should listen. By using the collective we, she signals to Callum that she's right by his side and they should reconsider this idea together. When Cosmo then corrects his mistake in telling the full truth, he states, The truth is... What? What is it? What's the truth? The truth is complicated. It not only applies to the Pearl, but also fully encapsulates Rayla and Callum's relationship. It's been made clear that Callum never stopped loving Rayla, even during the two years she disappeared. They've both been working to rebuild what they had, which is something they both wanted from the start. But the journey was indeed complicated, and it wasn't possible to take a shortcut straight there. He is told his one truth must outshine and dispel the darkness. Looking inwards, his mind is clouded as he overexerts himself, and he becomes trapped in his own mind many of which actually oppose the Sky Arcanum. We watch on as he helplessly begins to fall from the sky in a way reminiscent of the drowning sequence in Season 2. In his darkest moment, it is Rayla who offers her support. Embraced by her, Callum sees his brightest star, his truest hope and destiny, in his heart and mind. This entire scene mirrors the drowning sequence I mentioned just earlier, travelling into his heart and mind as per the name of one of the Season 2 music tracks and again with his head, hand, and heart, another music track from season 2, representing the tri-corner of strength according to the art book, connecting his mind, body, and spirit. Rayla remaining seated at the zenith exudes a confidence in Callum's ability. Her hopeful expression when he returns shows her faith in him before he's even confirmed he succeeded. Once Callum lands, Rayla rushes to embrace him, proud of his efforts and relieved. Later, as Rayla and Callum rest, Rayla asks him if there's anything keeping him awake. When he mentions the first time they saw each other after two years, Rayla becomes slightly embarrassed and offers a light apology. Callum begins to open up further and decides now is the time he wants to be vulnerable with her about his thoughts. Rayla, sensing the conversation turning serious, sits up more to not act so casual. When Callum finishes speaking, she offers a more direct apology. I'm sorry. No, 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 that's not... Uh, don't be. Callum's reply, don't be, leads me to think that he regrets how things unfolded and that he's disappointed in how he handled the situation. The next shot shows Callum jumping off of his bed into the center of the room. And while I know we've seen this room before, this wider shot emphasizes the height difference between their beds, and I think it's really sweet they decided Rayla should be in the higher one, closest to the moon. As they nervously discuss redoing their reunion, a familiar theme begins to play in the background. Say what you said when I first saw you. Do you remember? What you said? Rayla's nod and smile reassure Callum without words, reflecting the depth of their relationship. When Rayla walks in, Callum visibly relaxes his posture and turns to look at her. A smile grows across his face and his eyes begin to sparkle. In this moment, he has decided he has dealt with his overwhelming emotions and sets them aside in favour of enjoying the moment of finally seeing her again. A more developed version of Raylum's theme with additional string instruments plays, symbolizing the increasing complexity and growth of their relationship. The piano remains representing their individual clarity, while the strings come together in harmony to show their unity. Unlike their previous three first kisses, Callum acts much more confident with Rayla, taking her by surprise as he approaches her without words, wrapping his arms around her waist and back, pulling her in for a kiss. Rayla reciprocates, placing her hands on his shoulders and easing into the embrace, filled with the euphoria of being loved by someone she deeply cares for. This kiss is longer and more meaningful than any we've seen previously, with both of them savouring every moment. They gaze into each other's eyes and share a second kiss, filled with relief and joy. Callum tightens his hold on Rayla, neither of them ever wanting this moment to end. The end credits reflect the previously seen drowning S scene, depicting Rayla diving down to save Callum it also sharing similarities with these four scenes. Another sketch shows a constellation pertaining to Rayla, with the brightest star next to her heart, symbolizing her role as the guiding light in Callum's life, the brightest star to fill the darkness. 
Episode 7 presumably takes place the morning after, opening with a shot very similar to Episode 5 from Season 4. Rayla and Callum sit together on the edge of a tall structure that pierces through the clouds. Whilst the Starscraper is taller than the Storm Spire, visually being higher in the air is reflective of more positive, uplifting emotions that make them feel like they're flying, as if they're on Cloud 9. We see them sharing a kiss and acting affectionately, leaning on each other afterwards. Callum further comforts her by gently rubbing her arm. Rayla teases him about leaving and wanting to stay for more kisses. When Sneasels interrupts them, Stella gets annoyed, likely acting as a stand-in for the audience, because I know I was certainly about to throw his silly little ass off into the clouds. Rayla assures us there'll be more kisses later and gives Callum a playful wink, somewhat reminiscent of one of our favourite scenes in the show. It's okay. It was a bumpy ride. Much like last season when Rayla was afraid to jump into the water, Callum uses what he learned then to reassure her now. Noticing her fear, he says to trust the wings and to trust him, at which point Rayla smiles and repeats that she does trust him. As Callum begins counting down to the jump, he implies that they'll start flying together. Even before Callum jumps, he keeps his eyes on Rayla. She hesitates looking to him for reassurance, and Callum circles back with a comforting smile, giving her the confidence to follow after him. This episode closes with another sunrise, this time with Rayla and Callum flying towards it, symbolising them heading towards a new, brighter future. They sail easily, having worked through the difficulties and rough patches represented by the clouds. Upon arriving at the Moon Nexus and explaining their plan, Lu Jane quickly notices that Rayla and Callum are a couple again, presumably aware of their separation shortly following the events of the Through the Moon graphic novel. Rayla hesitantly, almost timidly answers yes, looking to Callum for his response. Callum, however, answers more confidently, reassuring Rayla that they are indeed a couple again. It falls on both their terms, and each of them agree that this is what they want, who they want. Callum goes a step further to say, it always was. It was always her. This statement reinforces what we've heard them both express before. They missed each other constantly, and they still loved each other throughout their two years apart. As well as this, it additionally emphasises the message in episode 6, where Callum discovered his one deep truth and found that Rayla never truly left him, aligning with the lullaby's message of enduring love in that previous episode. Both Rayla and Callum lean in towards each other and close their eyes, providing a sense of comfort and trust between them, highlighting their renewed connection as they continue to savour each other's company. Episode 9 begins with Rayla and Callum overlooking the Moon Nexus. As Callum speaks to Rayla about her upcoming task, they're backlit by light reflecting off of the water, symbolising hope and happiness. This choice in art direction contrasts with a darker tone that would have otherwise been present if the camera was turned around and we were shown the darkness of the forest behind them. Callum gives Rayla a bracelet made of moon phoenix feathers and inadvertently reveals what's truly on his mind, saying, It'll let you come back to me. To, to us. You know, to the, to the not dead side. Callum expresses a deep worry about losing her again. Realising he's just let his emotions slip, he quickly masks it with humour, his stress response to acknowledging these feelings. Rayla, thinking it brave or cute or wanting to comfort him, places her hand on the side of his face, tenderly pulling it forward. Her fingers rest softly behind his jaw, her thumb by his cheek, cradling his face in a close, protective way. Callum holds her by the waist, a gesture signifying their close bond. Rayla moves her hand from his cheek to rest at his arm, deepening the kiss, further reassuring him. Callum helps Rayla step up onto the railing, holding onto her hand, reluctant to let go. So much so that even as she dives in, he makes a slight attempt to reach and hold onto her once more, not wanting to lose her again. Once on the bottom of the lake, Rayla takes a deep breath similar to how Callum tried to teach her at the end of season 5 when he did the water breathing spell, but she wasn't able to bring herself to do it. At this moment, she may have thought of him encouraging her, helping her push through her fear. When Runan lays down his weapons and surrenders, part of the Silver Grove theme starts to play, but much slower, emphasising each drawn out note. I'm your daughter and I need you! It transforms the once cheerful theme into a somber reflection, a return home to peace from death. Interestingly, the romance theme in Because She's Rayla shares the same six notes as the Silver Grove theme, but adds two more notes at the end and with a slower tempo. Rayla is selfless, strong, and caring. That's what makes her a hero. That's what makes her 
Rayla. I'm your daughter and I need you. It suggests that the theme, whilst romantic, is rooted in the love and trust Rayla associates with her home. Now, she feels that same way with Callum, integrating him as part of her home. Callum anxiously leans over the railing, waiting for Rayla to resurface. This is in stark contrast to Rayla's much more content sit at the Starscraper's zenith. In saying this, however, Callum does have a bit more of an excuse. That being in Through the Moon, Rayla did actually need his help when she was between worlds. When he finally spots her, Calm immediately dives down using his wings to be with and check on her. About to start the spell, Rayla steps back and entrusts the life of one of her parents, essentially, with Callum. No pressure there. The spell's incantation translates to, love is the star of life, meaning that love is a guiding force in the journey of life. This also speaks volumes to Callum's earlier search for his one deep truth amongst the stars, where he found who he loved. During the spell casting, Callum and Claudia unknowingly perform the spell simultaneously. Terry appears visibly upset and afraid, with Claudia being none the wiser, eyes focused on the pearl. However, Callum has his eyes closed, confident in his craft and unregretful, whilst Rayla watches with hope and overwhelming joy. Rayla immediately runs over to embrace Runan after he fully comes back to life, compared to the mix of shock, horror and astonishment on Terry and Claudia's faces. I'd also like to make a quick interjection here for when Callum noticed the coin was blank after completing the spell. He ponders, staring at the coin, realisation dawning on him, and determination appearing across his face. It is highly possible that Callum may die next season casting a dark magic spell that traps Aravos in the blank coin that they now have. This also aligns with the next season's title being named Dark, and the explicit note of never being able to cast dark magic again earlier in the season once he flies amongst the stars. Although in saying that, I've heard the creators want to have three additional seasons past season 7, so who knows. Rayla and Callum have been on an incredible journey this season, both in their travels and in their relationship. This season has certainly filled the darkness I felt in my heart from missing their dynamic together, and it's a beautiful sight to see them as close as they were in season 3. They've managed to navigate their differences and rebuild beyond the bond they once had. I'm extremely pleased to see my favourite Raylum ship afloat and sailing strong once more. Hi again, I really hope you enjoyed the video. It'd mean a great amount to me if you liked the video and even considered subscribing. The script for this video ended up being a little under 7,000 words and I spent countless hours putting all of this together, so it'd truly mean the world to me if you showed your support. If you'd like, I'd love it if you also left a comment. It's always super enjoyable to talk to other fans and hear about your thoughts on what I've discussed. It's wonderful to be back on the platform after almost exactly a year, and I think it was the perfect video to return with, especially considering my last video was looking at Raylam in Season 5. I look forward to making more videos soon on a number of topics, but you can definitely expect another Dragon Prince video when Season 7 releases later this year, which is still incredible to me. As always, I really hope you enjoyed once again. I've been Adrian from Ember Nexus, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night.